So welcome back for those users who are coming in for the planned 3D user, user community virtual meetup session. So we have been conducting this session for almost a year now. Um, so uh, this is our second session for this uh, for this year. So uh, a little bit of uh, uh, house rules before we get started. Uh, so keep your lines muted, and if you have questions, please add them on the uh, question box. And if you have any audio issues, just feel free to drop us a note. We'll be happy to assist you as well on that. And uh, let me kick start with the presentation now. Okay. Let me go ahead and share the screen. Okay. So a little bit of uh, background about ourselves. Um, David is usually the presenter. David Manning is a designated support specialist, specifically looking into Plan 3D products and RCAD and Navisworks and Fusion. And uh, my name is Vinod. I'm a senior technical lead for RCAD. Uh, I'm a senior. Uh, thank you guys for acknowledging. So I'm I'm a senior technical lead for RCAD tools and software. Um, and a regular speaker at Autodesk University. Um, and I'm uh, one of the technical leads looking after AutoCAD tool sets performance and creating some high value content and uh, providing some customer experience to the product teams and so on. Let's go into the safe harbor statement for today. So uh, as usual, we make many statements regarding planned or future development efforts for our existing or new products and services. Uh, these statements are not intended to be promised or guaranteed as a business result or future availability of products and services, but merely reflect our current plans and are based on factors currently known to us. So uh, some of those uh, information that we may share may or may not come in the newer releases, but we try to provide as much information to you as customers as possible. Okay, now moving on from Safe Harbor, Safe Harbor statement, let's go into the agenda. So agenda for today is a quick overview and then followed by Plan 3D news, general updates and news, which we normally provide uh, in every user group meetings, followed by this month's theme. Uh, so this month's theme is going to be on uh, specs and catalogs. So how you can maintain associations between catalogs and specs and Plan 3D models and uh, uh, we're going to show you how the powerful workflow works uh, while managing all the three uh, features within Plan 3D software interface. And finally, we'll follow up with some questions. I'm going to extend it by another 10 minutes because of the initial delay. Uh, feel free to stay and ask any questions that you have uh, beyond the scheduled hour. Okay, so a quick overview of uh, what are the topics that we are planning to cover. Uh, we're going to start with how spec items are linked to the source catalog, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how plan 3D model components are uh, linked to their spec items. And finally, uh, we're going to also discuss about workflows for updating piping specs while maintaining the relationship with the catalog and the 3D model between the plan drawings. The scope of this whole session is about to give you a small portion of news and information about what's coming in plan 3d and also a general workflow of how spec and catalog editor works in tandem and with the plan 3d model so as uh, as i promised earlier we will extend an additional 10 minutes but feel free to post in all your questions uh, uh, while we are going through the presentation and i'll be happy to take them all at the end of the session okay plan 3d news for uh for today. So let's go with the first news. Plan 3D 2021 Rogue beta release. Uh, Rogue is the name for 2021. Um, so which have been released for some time now. Uh, if you want to register for the Plan 3D beta, this is the time and you have another eight days to register. So closing in on March 18 would be the last day. If you need to get access, you need to register to AutoCAD Customer Council. How you can register is send an email to Plan 3D Beta team 
at autodesk.com to request for access and they will be providing you access to the uh, plant pd beta which includes the new feature on bim docs integration uh, with plant 3d so uh, if you haven't registered for plant 3d rogue beta this is the last one week for you to go ahead and register and explore feel free to uh, drop a note to the team in the email address okay now let's go to the main topic maintaining catalogs spec plant 3d model association so let's go ahead what are we covering here? So what data is used to keep the connection? And what process disconnects between the pipe spec and the plant 3D model? And then obviously, how do you avoid these issues in future? So if you don't have any disconnect between the spec and the model or spec and the catalog. And finally, how does this plant 3D spec up, update check work? And what are the benefits of this command? Okay. So let's get started with the first one. So what data is used to keep the connections going? There are two things that I want to highlight here, which is the GUIDs uh, and then the PNP IDs. So um, graphical unique IDs, GUIDs are uh, one aspects that are uh, available in your model spec and catalog. Um, and also there is a PNP ID, I think, which is a unique ID, which is a sequential number that is also available in your plant database. Now, uh, some of your IDs will be in GUID format. You can see a, a example of how the GUID format looks like. We're going to later see where, uh, where you can find it and what tools you need to use to find these GUIDs. And then, obviously, the uh, PNP ID, which is in your plant database which will be in uh, numericals like one to one and so on. These are unique IDs within the same project, while GUIDs are cross-functional. So the differentiator is if you are using a plant three, uh, if you are using multiple plant projects between plant and service works, then the unique ID, GUID is more useful down there. And uh, if you are on the same project, then look, at, look out for the PNP ID uh, for any uh connections that you're making between the specs catalogs uh, and the 3d model all of these ids are typically hidden for users meaning you can't see them in the uh, plan 3d interface you need specialized tools to look into it so we'll go to that in a second on what tools you need and how you can view them and so on so let's go to the next slide now that we know there are two ids that are primarily focused on connections between the model spec and catalog Let's look at where these uh, IDs are found. So first, before we go into where these IDs are found, where, how do you open a database file? So you can use any of the SQL Express editors that are available uh, online, um, and uh, you can open these database files through the SQL uh, Express editors. And this is how it will look like. So when you edit a plan spec, or a pcat file which is a, a catalog file then you will uh, uh, when you open them on a uh, sql express editor this is how it will look like and from there you can move on to the data table there under the data table you will see a specific record called site record id so site record id is used for primarily used for matching the components between the catalog and the spec. As you can see here in a live example, there is a flange there that was uh, uh, that was uh, used in the ASME pipes and fitting catalog. Uh, now, when I open the PCAT file, which is the primary catalog database file, and I go into the data table and look under the flange, then I see the site record ID. And similarly, when I go into my uh, plant project spec, and open that again in the SQL editor, then I can see the size record ID. These two record IDs need to match for your spec and catalog to connect properly. If it is not matching, this is the first thing that you need to look into to make sure they are correctly mapped. And uh, so where is this size record ID stored? This size record ID is stored specifically under engineering items in the PNP view. Uh, when you go into the SQL uh, editor, 
uh, under the PNP view table, uh, you will be seeing under engineering items, this specific record ID, which is size record ID. And in, ten, in terms of uh, valve or valve, uh, for example, if it's a valve body part size ID of a component, uh, it will be under the valve PNP. And you again, uh, in that case, you need to make sure you match the size record ID uh, for engineering items. For valve, you need to map the valve PNP ID. So it depends on each and every component where you are uh looking into from both the catalog and the spec side and you need to look for the corresponding id and make sure those ids are matched appropriately both in the catalog and this side now next thing is now you have identified that there is some uh issue with the size record id and you have made some changes what is the next thing that i have to do so the next thing that I have to do is make sure your spec is updated when you make corrections within the catalog. Say for example, uh, if you have the uh, five uh, IDs that has been changed um, uh, in your catalog and you want to make sure you, are, you want to update your specs for your projects that are associated to the catalog, then you have to go into the spec and catalog editor under the spec tab, you will see three different options here. Uh, check for updates, batch update, specs from catalog, and then update specs from catalog settings. So let's focus one by one. So we're gonna start with check for updates from catalog. So once you hit check for updates from catalog, you will see what, you, uh, uh, what you're seeing here on the right-hand side of the screen. Let me pull the pointer out. Yeah, so you'll be seeing something like this. Catalog paths have changed, and do you want to update the spec paths to match the catalog paths? Or you will have the option do not update the spec path. So meaning you want to make some catalog changes, but you want to uh, utilize it in the future project, but not to this uh, project that is associated to the spec. So you can choose not to update. Um, but if you want to update the spec with the catalog changes, go ahead and do an update spec from catalog settings. So what happens when uh, during the update uh, from catalog process uh, happens uh, in plan 3D spec and uh, catalog editor? What happens here is all the reference catalogs are collected from the spec. The list of reference catalogs is generated from values in the catalog ID column I was mentioning about. Um, and then located using either the content of the PSPX file. Uh, so PSPC and PSPX are two different database files that are for the spec, and the IDs are stored under the .PSPX file. So where you can locate this file is usually by default, which will be under the shared plant content folder. We'll see that in a moment on screen. Uh, but if you are changing the content folder path, make sure your uh, project is referring to the right content folder path uh, where these updates are happening. Now, a path in the spec is matched with the part in the catalog using the size row ID, which I talked about uh, in the previous uh, slide. So when you do the update, it checks for the size row ID of, uh, of a particular uh, part in the catalog and validates it with the spec under the PSPX um, file and make sure they match. All column values in the spec except system values are compared. So basically it compares all the column values. We'll also see in the next slide what are those column values. And uh, all these column values are compared and uh, any differences will be reported to you. In uh, Unfortunately, uh, in this presentation, I didn't capture the next dialog but you should be seeing a list of reported uh, matches and mismatches there. And uh, it is checked uh, in the update spec from the catalog setting dialog itself. So uh, you're not going out of this dialog to see any, uh, any changes that have been made uh, uh, that has been uh, synchronized back to the spec. Uh, now, once it is present both in the spec and catalog, uh, editor, the user is shown a notification, which is spec update notification, which will tell you to accept or reject the spec update. 
at that point once you choose to accept whatever changes that you have made to the part in the catalog will be updated to the spec appropriately so this is the right process of modifying the spec uh, sorry modifying the catalog and updating the spec with the corrections that you have made uh, within the catalog to the spec and obviously back again to the plan 3d model as well so let's take a look at how these data connections work so let me go ahead and move on to the next slide okay what data is used to keep the connections new ids are usually uh, generated for components that you create in the catalog so now let's take a look at in each uh, interface what's happening there what happens in the catalog what happens in the spec and finally what happens in the 3d model within the plant interface now in the catalog when a new part is created a uh, catalog uh, i mean obviously you're going to create a new part uh, in the catalog or you're going to import those uh, new part from another source maybe uh, you have from bentley or other uh, custom catalogs that your vendor has provided so now you want to import the part uh, into your catalog so that's how you normally bring in a new part or a existing part that is imported at that point what happens in the catalog catalog is the master database so there's no connections established at that point so there will be no connections within the catalog for that particular part now next thing is what happens in the spec a new part then you are going to add this part into the spec using the second catalog editor and you're going to choose a, choose a, a part and bring it to the spec from the catalog now what happens here is a connection is made between the spec part and the source catalog Again, as I was referring to those uh, uh, GUIDs and PNPIDs, they, those are critical to create this mapping. So once the IDs are mapped for the part, then the spec and catalog are connected at that point. Now, what happens in the 3D model then? A new part is placed in the 3D model. So now you have connected the spec. Now you are going to use the spec on your planned project. So at this point, now you are placing this new part into the uh, plan project when you place this from whether uh, spec palette spec viewer or, or through pipe router or using an autocad copy and paste command a connection between the model and the source spec is established so you can do any ways of uh, doing it within the model meaning you can take through from a spec palette or you can even copy like an autocad object copying the Apart from uh, one drawing to another drawing, what, uh, whatever you are doing here, all these workflows, a connection will be established between the model part that you have placed in, or the part that you have placed in the model, and the source spec part. So now that that's the three-way connection that happens. Now the model is connected to the spec, and then the spec is uh, connected to the catalog as well through the unique ID that we were referring to in the previous uh, segments of the slides. Now, now, you have made these connections. Now you wanted to know what process disconnects. So what are the potential causes that uh, will disconnect the pipe spec uh, from the model or will disconnect the pipe spec uh, from the catalog? So we have identified a few uh, most repeated process that happens in plan 3d project uh, but there may be additional things that you may be aware of as well so i'll just point out some of those key ones first is renaming or moving the specs so when you define your project it is always better to make sure how your spec name needs to be and where the spec path needs to be try not to move those specs the reason behind that is uh, these spec names are captured when you when the linking happens between the model to spec to the catalog so the spec names are captured to the catalog database file as well the pcat file and vice versa in the psdx file as well so if you make any renaming in the middle of the project there is a possibility that this connection is broken and you are unable to establish the connection back and also moving the spec uh, is also need to be uh, avoided uh, always plan where you want to keep the spec if you want to keep the spec in a centralized location or you want to keep the spec associated to the project itself 
make that decision up front and make sure those spec parts are configured correctly under the project setup. Now, if you are changing any spec parts in the middle of the project, then make sure you change the project spec part uh, in the project uh, manager itself, but avoid doing so while you are in the middle of the project, unless if it is uh, critical that these uh, parts need to be changed due to some uh, hardware issues and so on, then please keep in mind that may be possibility that the connectivity between the spec and the catalog and the model may get broken and you may need to reassociate it to the new part. Now, uh, now if you are deleting part families, say if you want to remove a specific part that you have created, maybe let's say you have created a custom valve and uh, you want to remove it from your valve spec, uh, go ahead, if you are deleting it from the spec, but not removing it in the model or not updating it back to the cat, uh, catalog, then you are also creating a disconnect. Now, removing parts from the spec families and re-adding them. So often people, what they do is they remove and re-add them with a different name or make some changes to the valve properties and then uh, re-add them. So the problem here is when you re-add, the model doesn't know the new update to the spec unless you do the update uh, within the plan 3D model interface as well. So, Try not to do these things, plan ahead, and make sure your spec, is, spec and your catalog is ready before you start your project. And uh, also, renaming moving catalogs or deleting parts from catalogs and doing an update, all these things will cause disconnect as well. So again, doing all these things upfront is the best approach, but if you wanna do it, then I'm gonna show you in a moment what is the right workflow of how to uh, update these changes while you are in the middle of the project. Okay. okay, let's take a look at how do you avoid this issue. Establish good procedures here. So we're gonna show this workflow. This is, this is the simplest workflow uh, that you can bring it to your uh, teams. So make sure uh, your project engineers follow this workflow and uh, uh, not tamper the spec or the catalog's uh, connectivity. Okay, so we segmented this workflow example into two segments. One is an administrator. I think some of you are plant administrator, and then uh, how the user, what role the user plays and what role the administrator needs to play here. So when we look at from an administrator standpoint, what the administrator has to do is, um, Let's say if the administrator wants to modify the catalog and say I want to remove a part or add a part or modify a part. Now he or she is going to make those changes in the uh, second catalog editor. Under the catalog editor, they're going to make those changes to the PCAT file. Now they will save the file. After they have saved the file, they can update the spec from the catalog right there itself as an administrator. So the specs that are associated uh, to the catalog for those various projects will get updated with the catalog changes. Then once you save those things, notify the users of the spec change that you have made and push it from the catalog. Now what does the user has to do when they not, when they not, when they are notified that a spec change is made by the uh, made uh, to the cat uh, a component that update has been done in the catalog and a spec change has been made and notify to the user. Now, let's look at what the user needs to do at that point. So user needs to do a few things here. Now, the first thing the user needs to do is, if the user has the spec on a different location, copy the updated to this, uh, updated spec to the project. Uh, uh, so make sure the spec that is associated to the project is updated with whatever the catalog update that is pushed to the spec. Now, once that update is confirmed, then you update the model from the spec. So make sure within the plan 3D interface on the bottom right corner, you will see update model from spec and you select that and you will be allowed to update the model from the spec changes. So obviously these updates go stored into the data manager now uh, verify all these model parts are updated through the data manager. Make sure, let's say, if you have changed the long description of a, say again, a valve, 
and uh, you know made the update between the catalog to the spec and now spec to the model go to the da uh, data manager and see if the uh, long description that you changed for the uh, valve is updated for that particular part that was inserted into the model and also obviously the last thing that you want to look at is if there are any graphical changes mirrored to the spec uh, make sure those graphical changes are updated in the model as well Sometimes users might not do that check and there may be possibility that the graphical changes are not updated or if the process is not followed accordingly, then the update to the uh, uh, model graphics is not fully complete as well. So make sure you follow this workflow and avoid any uh, connection issues while doing an update between the spec and the catalog. Now, uh, we also want to point out Few, uh, uh, few highlights here. So uh, if you have established a spec building procedure within your organization, uh, for example, uh, you have used uh, property overrides within the spec editor. Let's say uh, you use the property overrides to change the parts material uh, or the material code or scheduling uh, to your catalog items. Then, um, uh, and if, if you have established a workflow where you make those changes and you have uh, uh, inserted it, uh, those changes into a spec, you want to make sure you deselect those properties when you do an update spec from catalog setting. Why do I need to do? Because when you do an update from catalog to spec, the property overrides are uh, replaced. So you need to avoid that. If you have changed specific properties only to that specific spec to that corresponding project, then while updating the entire catalog, make sure you deselect those properties so they remain on the spec appropriately. And uh, the remaining update, say uh, you have done a graphical update, but not uh, but you have done a manual property override on material and uh, long description, then you deselect these properties and uh, do an update so that the graphical update alone happens to the spec from the catalog, not the property update. Now, another thing is always use save as to create uh, new versions or copies of your specs and catalog. So if you're creating a new spec uh, for within your project or you wanna create new catalogs for your uh, future projects, Make sure you do a save as, don't overwrite the existing catalog or the spec. Again, do not delete items from uh, spec or model if possible. I think I highlighted it in the previous slide as well. Uh, try avoiding deleting items from the spec or models manually. Use the substitute grips. So when you click the model and uh, when you right click, you will have the substitute option. Use the substitute grip. To replace the absolute or uh, sorry, to replace the obsolete or uh, incorrect parts. Say, for example, you have changed uh, again a valve uh, property and graphics, and you have updated the spec. Now you want to change it in the model. Do not just delete it or, uh, on the model and try to paste a new one. Right click uh, on the model and then go for the substitute and change the uh, spec to the right appropriate. Uh, uh, update that has made in the spec to the model that uh, where you have placed this new part. So um, let me go into the next slide to actually quickly show you one of the examples that we have. So how do you, um, so when you look at this, how do you do this thing? So here you can see on the first uh, screenshot is a data manager here. Um, so under the current drawing, uh, the best thing that you can do uh, at this point is, let's say, uh, let's take this scenario first. So one of the valves in the pipe spec valve has changed uh, to a completely different valve. Assuming you have changed the uh, valve in the spec to a completely different valve, and uh, <clears throat> now you need to update this in the model. So what you, you can do is, within the data manager, you make sure, uh, <clears throat> you, you make sure there's a, a long description uh, is modified as well. So let's look at what are um, what are the things that we will do here in this scenario. Now, instead of deleting the incorrect uh, valve, 
from the pipe spec what you can do first is in this uh, open the spec in the spec and catalog editor in, and modify the description of the existing incorrect valve whatever the valve that you have placed within the uh, model uh, so you uh, go to the spec and catalog editor and under the spec you modify the long description to read something like out of spec gate valve concept. I mean, this is a gate valve example, just add some additional changes as out of spec now. Now, now what you have to do next is uh, place the correct valve family from uh, into the spec from the catalog. Obviously, you might have made the changes uh, for the new valve in the catalog. Now you place those changes to the spec and save the spec. This established the connection between the spec and the catalog, and the latest update to that valve is brought over from the catalog to the spec. Now, at this point, notify your designers about the change, and uh, whoever is working on the plan project at that point of time, ask them to run a plan spec update check. We'll come to the command a little bit in detail. So at this point, just ask them to run the plan spec update check. This will update the descriptions of the existing incorrect valve in the 3D model. So once you do the plan spec update, whatever the changes that we did in the spec editor to modify the long description of the old valve will be updated in your model. Uh, and to validate that, go to the data manager and look for that uh, valve, that uh, incorrect valve that you want to remove. So you should see the long description as out of spec. So at that point, what should I do? Should I go ahead and delete the valve because I have just made the update in the spec and catalog editor? Shall I go ahead and remove the, the valve wherever they are placed in the model? No, you shouldn't do that. What you should do is select the valve, right click, and you will get, uh, when you uh, right click, you get the option to substitute. So here in the screenshot, you can see here, there are two options here of, uh, for the valve. The first one is an incorrect valve. Uh, that's the current one. And then you have the second option, which is an updated valve that comes from the catalog update to the spec and back to the model using this plan spec update check command. Now you can choose the second one, which is updated uh, uh, spec. And then this will automatically update the model with whatever the graphical and property changes that you have done both in the catalog and the spec. This is the right way for you to update back from catalog to spec to the model. Uh, you shouldn't be uh, manually deleting it in spec or manually deleting it in the plan 3D model and creating more disconnect between all the three. Okay, so the next piece that I want to highlight is uh, before that, I just want to pause for a second to see if there are any questions that were popped in. And I don't see any questions at this point, so please feel free to add your questions. I'll try to go ahead and uh, answer them in a, in a few minutes from now. Okay, let me go back to the presentation once again. Uh, how does the plan 3D spec update check work? So, uh, you can type the plan 3D spec update check in the command line or on the, as I mentioned on the right hand uh, corner of the uh, plan 3D software, you will see a dialog box. You will see in a moment uh, having the option to update the uh, changes through the spec. Now, uh, we'll come to that workflow in plan 3D, uh, but before that, uh, there are a few things that I want to highlight to you guys as system variables that you need to take note of. The first one is plan spec notify. So this is a system variable that helps you to notify the user when there is a spec update is made. So it's, it's, a, it's in a binary value, zeros or one. If it is set to one, plan 3D will check for specific uh, spec file updates that happen. Uh, when you run a plan spec update check. And then it will notify the user. Now, if you set it to zero, then it will not notify the user when a spec update is made. Um, and then there is also another system variable, which is plan spec notify time. Uh, this actually 
uh, helps you to control what is the time interval in which you want the notification to be. Let's say as an administrator, you don't want to trouble the user to get this notification so regularly, then you can change the default value is two, but the va integer values goes from zero to four, giving different options with respect to the time interval for the administrator to play with or the user to play with as well. So, and finally, the plan spec update check command itself. This command, as I've been repeating in this slide, will force an immediate check for changes to the pipe spec uh, that is used in the 3D model, and it will automatically update those changes into your uh, into your project and make sure the model properties that were updated in the spec is updated back to your 3D model as well, the 3D model that's associated uh, to your plan 3D drawing, okay? So if changes are discovered, then you can obviously update the plan 3D model with the spec update changes that you have done. Now, uh, on to the next slide, let me go ahead. Okay, so how does this plant update check work? So uh, I was talking about this update check, where is it? So you can either type in the command line or at the bottom right-hand corner of the plant tree software, it will pop up showing uh, an option to do a plant 3D update, uh, spec update. When you hit that, you will see this dialog box, which is spec update available, a pipe spec update is available, and then it will give you update pipe specs recommended or ask me later. So it gives the user some time as well. So this is the system variable that I was talking about, which is a plan spec update notified time. You can also spec, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're, designer is working on a project and they don't want to do an a spec update at this hour, so they can schedule the update as well. And they can also ask the Plan 3D software to ask the user uh, to alert before an update is made. So if you want to do the spec update now, just hit check now and it will start doing the update. And if you want to automatically do the spec update whenever I open a plan model, Make sure that it is updated to the spec, then choose this option of always update pipe spec. So it goes back and checks the spec, and if that is updated in the spec, then it pushes those update automatically to the model, and uh, you don't need a specific notification at that point. But another thing is also make sure your geometry update has happened, even though an auto spec update is pushed. Make sure in your data manager as well, the the properties that you have updated are properly updated and uh, and make sure uh, along with the property update, the geometry update has also happened when you have both changes with respect to your spec. Now, the next thing that I wanted to do, uh, talk about is about what are, what are the things that you need to do or uh, know when you do a plant spec update check uh, in a working environment. So uh, we just put a small flow chart to explain for both administrators and users on do's and don'ts here. So what you should do here is create a list of specs reference in the plan 3D model. Always create a list so you know what specs are used uh, as reference into your plan 3D model or the plan 3D uh, project. Now, uh, Verify, are these spec files newer or um, um, are older specs? So if it is, uh, these spec files are new, then uh, fine. If it is no, uh, then no updates are needed. Just go ahead with whatever the existing model is there, then it's fine. Now, uh, now the next thing is um, when you are, looking for changes, uh, when you have made changes to the spec, now you are updating the model, uh, and you are saying yes to that decision. And uh, now the next thing that you need to look out is, do the model IDs match to the spec ID? We talked about plan spec update check, how it works, how the auto update works, how the connectivity works. But also, as in the beginning, we talked about the ID match, Make sure you check the ID match before even you run this command, just to avoid uh, any ID mismatch and create further uh, confusion to the parts that you have inserted within the model. Just check the model IDs match with the spec IDs. 
And uh, if they match, I don't think you need to run the clan spec update command at this moment. Just leave it as it is. But if there is some issue and you have made some changes, then uh, update the part properties defined in the project setup and then do the plan spec update check. So to avoid any disconnectivity. So it can be done by both administrators and the users, but some portion of this, like modifying the part properties, are usually done by the administrator, and the spec update is done by the user. So follow this workflow uh, flow chart to make sure you do the plan spec update check uh, in a correct way. So the next one, how does the plan uh, spec update check work? from the project setup. We just talked about how it works in the project setup. And I also was finding out in the beginning of the slides that uh, in, in one of the slides I was mentioning that if you have geometry updates and you have also made some property override, say you modified the materials or you modified the material code for the spec only, and uh, you wanted to make sure that update doesn't uh, go from the catalog uh, to the spec. So you deselect it and then you update from catalog to spec. Uh, the only, uh, the properties that needs to be only updated, not the overridden properties. Same approach comes here for the model as well. Say if you have modified uh, the model properties and did an override and change some of the model properties compared to the Spec. And when you do a spec update with the model, you want to make sure those properties are not updated so that your overrides are being, uh, lost. So in that case, what you can do is under the project setup, go to the spec update settings, and here you will see the list of properties here. Say if you have manually modified the material or material code for the model uh, using the property override, now you want to deselect this guy before you do a spec update check. So what happens is, if you have made changes to the material manually in the model, then that is preserved and it is not updated with whatever the updates that made in the spec. This is something often users forget because they may have uh, modified manually to overwrite for specific properties needed for that specific project or the specific drawing or the model that they're working on. And when they do a quick spec update check, then everything gets automatically changed to what's default on the spec. And then they will be, uh, if you're a CAD admin, they'll be coming to you and asking, oh, my materials are lost and now I have a different material value. Obviously because the spec update will throw the latest update that is from the spec. So these are some things you want to note, note, uh, note off uh, while doing the spec update. Uh, and uh, these are very high level workflows that we talked to you guys today about, uh, but there are plenty of other things uh, with respect to advanced level of uh, spec and catalog editing. There are a few uh, fun 3D uh, university, uh, Autodesk University classes. Uh, one of them I highlighted, which is how to create unbreakable project workflows. Uh, that is also how to create uh, and update uh, uh, custom specs and catalogs. So these are available in our Autodesk University website. These are accessible for every Autodesk uh, account users and you should be able to watch them free of cost. And there is also in the Pipes blog, some of us are writing blogs about plant 3D uh, issues. So there are very good articles. One of them is maintaining connectivity between plant 3D models, specs, and the catalogs. So I have given the hyperlink so you can go there and uh, uh, read through the same things that we discussed about, and there may be a few more additional things around uh, some of the custom properties that uh, you'd like to sing back and forth between uh, the spec and the model and the catalog. So uh, one last uh, thing before I want to highlight. So um, uh, always make sure uh, your um, spec and catalog editor, uh, while working on spec and catalog editor, you're running as administrator if you're modifying any catalog level changes. And uh, if you're modifying any of those PCAT or PSPX uh, database files, make sure they are saved to the right path. And if you are creating new ones, 
do a save as, uh, do not overwrite the existing ones that are currently used in the project. So these are some uh, quick ethics that you need to want to uh, bring into your uh, design work so that uh, your spec and catalog editing uh, goes through smoothly between uh, your projects. Now, that's about all the today's topic on uh, plan 3D spec and edit, uh, spec catalog editor updates to the model. But I also want to follow up on one of the uh, questions that was asked in the uh, uh, last uh, community meetup was around uh, plant audit command. Um, so there were some changes to the plant audit command uh, in the 2019.2 update and also into the plan 3D 2020 RTM release. Uh, so the plant audit command allows you to uh, correct corrupted piping geometries. So that's an update that uh, uh, will be available if you are using plan 2019.2 update or plan 2020. In the past, it would just erase those 3D objects that are corrupt in the drawing, uh, but from release 2019.2 update and 2020, it will uh, correct those corrupted piping geometry entries and fix them in the project database as well. So that's one of the questions that was asked in the previous segment. We just wanted to follow up and provide an answer on that. Okay. So um, there were a few other questions that were asked in the previous uh, in the previous segment. So we have captured that for every user to benefit out of it. If you haven't attended, you can watch it on the uh, uh, planned customer success site. Uh, I believe you you would have come through that for registering. If not, we have included the link here. Uh, you can go here and look for all the previous sessions and the recordings of those previous sessions as well. So with that, we, uh, we come to the end of the segment and uh, in view of time that we lost uh, previously, once again, we apologize to all the attendees uh, due to the technical glitch. And I just want to answer any questions that, uh, that you have on the uh, presentation today. So we'll give a minute. Uh, if there are not much questions for today, thank you for getting involved and we really appreciate your uh, presence here and we look forward to uh, talk to you all in the next Plan 3D community meetup. Thank you then and have a great day.